Hello, welcome to my webinar on the gamification of learning content. Thank you all for joining me. Hopefully it should be interesting for you today. The way we're going to run this is obviously start my introduction and then I've got a presentation prepared to show you all and talk you through. Uh, we've got the questions app installed in Hangouts. If you do have any questions, just post them in there. Equally, you can email me or get in touch with me afterwards and I'm more than happy to have a chat about things. So, to get things started, I'll just share my presentation with you all. You should all see this now. Now, first to introduce myself, I am Ben Wagner. As it says on the screen, I'm a technical evangelist for WebAnywhere. And you can find all my contact details on there, including Twitter and LinkedIn. If you want to get in touch afterwards, please feel free to go so, do so. We'd be more than happy to talk through any of the things I've raised today. And hopefully we can uh, keep the conversation going. Now, first off, what is gamification, to put it simply? Well, it's relatively new. It's one of those buzzwords that you hear all the time these days, but it is still a relatively new concept in e-learning. Now, everyone out there who's a teacher who's watching this will know the struggle that you can have with keeping learning relevant and with engaging with all those learners today that are very technology driven. Now, gamification is a very broad concept. Basically, it covers any activity that you can make something game-based. So in layman's terms, that's something that has an activity that's structured around a reward-based method. And this induces an immediate payoff when someone completes a task. Now, the first forays into gamification that we saw on the market were companies creating learning that was either disguised with or delivered by a game. So an actual game that someone would play online. Uh, for instance, one of our partners, Planet Sherston, delivers exactly this sort of content aimed at younger learners at you know, primary school age. Now, these can be really, really good, uh, particularly for younger learners for picking up information, and it helps them to engage and work on self-led learning, which is really great. Now, what we saw when I was looking into this was that a lot of older students and workplace learners were actually left out by this approach. They kind of saw through the idea of games for learning and didn't really you know, find that particularly useful system. So what we've been looking at is how to make it more relevant for older learners and make it where you can still have all the benefits of gamification but without actually having them play a game. And this sort of motivation can actually be seen as a, a direct motivator for the open badges concept that we're going to cover today. Now, a quick introduction to Open Badges for you. Uh, it's free software, which is always nice to hear, that's been developed by the Mozilla Foundation. Now, these are the guys behind the Firefox browser that you've probably heard of or used over the years. And it's a technical standard that lets you integrate badges into various platforms. And the idea is it provides a unified approach. So you can all sorts of different pieces of software, but you'll be using the same badge-based approach. Now, at their heart, an open badge is a combination of a traditional and a modern concept. So most educators and teachers and instructors out there, you'll be used to the concept of giving a gold star to a learner when they've done good work and things like that. You know, it might be a, a nice stamp in their book or various other the methods of approaching it. Now, badges can be same, seen as the same sort of motivating feature. Now, the more modern concept that they're linked to will be familiar to anyone who plays computer games, either on a console, like a PlayStation or an Xbox, big releases of them over the last couple of weeks, or on a PC, for instance, through something like Steam. Now, these are often known as achievements, or gamer points, there's various other terms, but at the root, they're the uh, same idea. And they're a badge of honor for completing some particular feat or achievement in the game. So if you do a particularly high score, you can get an achievement. And then these are displayed on users' profiles, and there's lots of competition around collecting them all or trying to achieve a particular one that develops within these games. So open badges can really be seen as a combination of these ideas, and I've put the quote on the side for you, an electronic award for particularly good work. So that's the idea behind them, and that's what we'll be looking through today. Now, obviously, that sounds very interesting, but open badges shouldn't be viewed just in a vacuum, just this one-off thing that's happening by itself. 
So what you've got to look at is the framework of your learning outcomes. So looking at what you're trying to get out of the learning and then try to see how open badges fit into it. Now, what you need to look at is the effort you're going to put into creating the badges and getting things working and the benefit that both you as the teacher but also your students get out of it. Now, the good news is open badges don't take a huge amount of effort. They're quite easy to set up. There's plenty of graphics programs that can generate them, uh, anything from very basic ones like Paint up to Photoshop and Illustrator and things like that. But as well as that, there's lots of tools online that can help you produce really, really nice looking badges that are totally simple to use. Once you've done that, all you need to do is upload them to your LMS and then decide what the conditions are to award the badge. We'll cover a little bit of that in a moment. Now, I've mentioned two prompts for case studies up on the slides, and I think the key thing when looking at open badges is to think about how you're going to use them. So I've come up with a couple of little case studies based on conversations I've had with uh, customers and people in the industry, just to kind of guide you through some of the use case. So the first up is a learner, we're going to call him Chris, and Chris is a secondary school student, he's age 14, and surprise, surprise, he gets bored in class and has a very short attention span, which I'm sure won't be an unfamiliar story to those of you that teach secondary schools. Now you as a teacher, you want to keep Chris engaged with what you're trying to teach, but you find that he doesn't enjoy traditional learning methods, he doesn't like listening to in class, doesn't like taking things down, doesn't like reading from textbooks, so the standard methods aren't going so well. Now being a, a dynamic teacher, that's all for the uh, new ways of teaching, you've looked at doing a flipped classroom approach. So for those who aren't familiar with it, this is where you'd have Chris do the interactive activities in the classroom, so the ones he's more likely to be engaged with that are motivate him, and doing the reading and watching of materials at home. Now you've tried this, and it seems to go well in class, but you're still struggling to get Chris to do the materials at home. So getting him to do the reading is proving a bit of a challenge. Now this is where I put badges into the case, because what you can do with badges is have them trigger if the student reads and watches the resources online. Now, just so you don't have the situation where they click it and leave again, you can have the badge trigger after a short quiz so that you're just checking that they've absorbed the knowledge and that they're picking up all the material effectively. You can be a little bit sneaky. You could deploy the badges without announcing them and then see in the next lesson as the students are comparing notes and saying, oh, hang on a sec, what's this, uh, what's this badge thing you've got? Now, I didn't want to get one of them. What, what did you do to do that? If you then let them know that from now on there's this achievement, this badge that they can acquire whenever they complete the test after the reading, you should hopefully find that the, because the students don't want to miss out or not have this thing that everyone else is getting, that even a more reluctant student like Chris begins to pick up the reading and begins to complete the work on time. So that's the first one. And what we're doing in this example is using the student's natural inclination to compete with each other to drive the engagement with this new form of learning. So the badges aren't a magic tool, they're not going to suddenly inspire a disenchanted student, but an innovative teacher who's using new methods like the flipped classroom can do this, and what the badges are doing are giving that extra bit of incentive to encourage a really reluctant learner. So that's kind of an example from a secondary perspective. Now, just to give you another angle, it's one that's not often covered enough, but I work with a lot of workplaces as well as schools. So I'd like to give you a badges example with an introverted member of staff and how it would work in a workplace environment. So this is our second learner. We're going to call him Josh. And Josh is a professional developer. And he's very quiet and introverted and doesn't enjoy group learning sessions, which is often a common tactic in workplace learning. So you know, you as a HR manager or an instructor, you have this obligation to get Josh to undergo continued professional development. And there's often in worse workplaces nowadays various compliance issues, various things that he needs to credit with, that you need to make sure he's carrying out. And if Josh isn't, that can have implications not just for his career, but also for you as an organisation. Examples of this might be fire health and safety training, training in an expenses system, anything like that where there's a compliance element. Now, the way a lot of teams organise this is to do a group's training day, maybe go off-site somewhere, maybe have a lunch together, go through the material, get one on board, 
and then hopefully they've learned everything you need them to. Unfortunately, Josh is one of those learners who shies away from those sessions, often tries to skip them, suddenly has a very important meeting, I'm sure you've heard of the type before, or when he's there, doesn't really contribute, doesn't really engage. So you're really struggling then to get Josh to engage with his own CPD in terms of his developer skills and developing them, but also to engage with things that often you're legally obligated to get him to do. Now, as a dynamic instructor, you examine a different approach to Josh's training, and you start recording a series of videos that go through the compliance regulations with quizzes on your LMS to check his knowledge. So that will cover you for a lot of your compliance-based elements of his learning. And you also develop an internal mentor program so that Josh can learn from another senior developer in a one-on-one -on -one environment. So that's your innovative learning happening there. Now, in terms of use of badges, you can have a mixture in this situation. You can have automatic badges for passing the quizzes. So this lets Josh work through materials himself. He might do it from home, might do it on his mobile phone if you're a responsive LMS, anything like that. And when he hits compliance, he can get badges and they can trigger and it's a, a nice little buzz. You can also assign badges manually. Now, when you assign a badge manually, this can be really, really good for rewarding things like Josh for engaging with the mentor program, rewarding the mentor for taking on a, a mentee and actually encouraging that, and then also for hitting milestones. So, for instance, as a developer, if Josh learned a new coding language, or perhaps he wrote up or recorded what he learned and shared it with others, which is a really big thing for someone who's very introverted, you might reward him with a special badge. Now, these are just kind of rough examples, just to give you an idea, but hopefully that you know, gives you some perspective on how you can integrate badges into either a school or a workplace environment. Now, a key part of badges, which you'll have heard through those examples, is you're trying to recognize non-certified learning. Now, in layman's terms, what I mean by that is you're trying to recognize skills that have been picked up or achievements that have been made that aren't recognized by something like a GCSE or a form of professional accreditation. So, you know, GCSEs, don't get me wrong, are very important, but when they have them to worry about, they might be quite hard to motivate onto the other tasks you want them to do. So open badges can be really great at recognizing this other learning. Learners often like to show off their badges, whether they're students at a school or in a workplace environment. And also they can be motivated by the incentive learning more. Or if you're particularly secretive and sneaky, trying to find them all. I uh, recently went to the International Mood and Mooch online conference, and their badges were a very big thing. And a lot of them were kind of hidden in various quarters, and that's trying to achieve as many badges as possible kind of kept everyone going, especially at early hours in the morning when we were watching international presentations. I've actually seen that sort of spread across all ages. It's very common in schools, but you'd be surprised how many older learners and workplaces get really motivated by either collecting a whole collection or even showing off a particularly rare badge for some achievement to their peers. Equally, being able to offer badges manually for hard work or achieving something that isn't typically recognized can be really useful for congratulating a learner for something out of the ordinary. So if you know they've stayed really late at night to help you finish a project off, or you know they've made a dramatic improvement to their English scores, you can actually reward them and say, look, you know, I've recognized this work, it's really good work, and I want to award you this badge. Now I'm going to move on to Moodle, uh, which those of you watching probably have no surprise that I am very familiar with Moodle. And I want to just go a bit through how Moodle integrates with open badges and really what you can get out of it from that. Now, Moodle's a leading LMS, as I'm sure you're all aware, and it's really, really great that it's integrated with open badges. It's been a key feature. It came out in 2.5, so it's been around six months now. And there's a few things you can do directly from in, within Moodle, and I've highlighted kind of the headings here. I'm just going to go into a little bit more detail and just kind of show you what you can do. So in terms of the first step, you can show your badges. Now, any Moodle user can link their profile to their backpack, which is the hosted site on Mozilla where you store your badges. And for those who are interested in what a backpack looks like, I'm going to put a link in the event and in the YouTube show notes after the presentation to one of my backpack views so you can have a look at my badges and see what I'm talking about. Now, there's also a block built into Moodle, so you can show their latest badges. 
And what's really nice is users might pop in each other's profiles. Often it's an easy way of sending someone a message. And being able to show your latest badges on there is a really, really nice feature. So if I want to go and message Chris and thank him for his English homework and said it was really good, I can meet this see his badges. So if he picks up a good badge for doing something in science, I might mention it to him and say, oh, yeah, I know this, as well as English going well, you've achieved your badge in science. You know, well done for that. And it can be really nice positive reinforcement. Equally, the block version works really nicely on the My Moodle personal homepage. Uh, for those of you who aren't using it yet, My Moodle is a special page that's built into Moodle that allows each user to have their own personalized homepage. And having this block enabled for that page is a really nice way of them seeing their latest badges on there. Now, the second aspect is the creation and assigning of badges. So obviously, the first step is to generate your graphics, which I mentioned earlier, either using a graphic program like Photoshop or Illustrator, or by using a tool online and generating a badge that way. Now, once you've generated your graphics, you can upload the badge to a course. Now, this is where the kind of the real meat comes onto the kind of framework of the graphics. You can assign all the settings, like who the assignee is, so your school or your office's name, what the details are of the badge, when it was awarded, does it have you know, an expiry date, anything like that. And you can set up you know, who it can be assigned to, what course it's assigned to, and that sort of thing. And once you've done all of that, you can move on to actually awarding the badges. Now, the best way of doing that within Moodle is using Moodle's conditional activities to trigger the award of a badge when an activity is marked as complete. Now, you can link completion to a particular score, and that's a great way of having a badge for those that pass compliance, or a particularly high achiever, or something like that. You can also have badges that are set up to be manually awarded. Now, that requires a user with a certain role, usually a teacher or instructor, whatever you like to call them, to manually award the badge to an individual user. Now, you can imagine this isn't particularly useful for large quantities where you're making the whole class take a quiz. But for something that's kind of non-quantitative, where you're talking about you know, particularly extra work or you stayed late or something like that, it can be a really, really nice way of awarding a badge for something like being a mentor or excellent effort that Moodle itself would struggle to award automatically because it doesn't spy on you and can't see what you're doing all the time. Well, that's kind of the, uh, the bulk of the presentation. So I'm just going to drop my screen share off now. So you should hopefully be able to see me again. Well, thank you all for listening. As I said, my details are on the slide. You can get a hold of me at ben.wagner at webanywhere.co.uk. I'd love to hear from anyone, uh, either with some feedback, just as how you thought the presentation had gone. This is a relatively new thing for us. Or if you've got any questions about gamification or the Open Badges project, please let me know. Uh, this video is getting uploaded to YouTube, so it will be up there and you can share it with your colleagues. And again, I'll put all the links into the event page, so if you do want to watch this again, or if you're somebody who couldn't make it and you want to share it with a colleague, then that's absolutely fine. So I hope that's been a good overview for Open Badges for you. I hope you've enjoyed it, and thank you all very much for listening.